it's time for another gas mask review and test and today it's the Swiss SM67. Now this is a mask a lot of people confuse for other masks so I'll get out and show you. Here it is. This is the Swiss SM67. I'll see if I can actually see a production year on my particular mask. But it was used by the Swiss Army as far as I know from obviously sometimes in the 60s to the 70s. I guess 1967, I think it was something like the SM75, a number like that that replaced it. However, if you Google SM67, you get lots of the other Swiss masks that come up on the images because often I think people sell them and not know the names of the mask. So here's the mask, it's pretty primitive. Filter intake there, 40mm NATO, two eye holes, a big nose bit, and an exhale valve pointing down at the bottom, the American M9 sort of style exhale valve. I can't see any actual date stamps and inside is also very primitive no inner mask or anything interesting like that just simply the eye holes the inhale and exhale valve at the bottom so it's very primitive um, now I held off on getting from one of these for quite a while because this was 30 pounds it came with its satchel bag but the satchel bag is basically just a tarp almost like somebody's fashion tarp with some buttons and a strap and then there's the mask so in terms of is it a good prepper's mask for the money, probably not, but I, I quite wanted one because I thought they looked cool. A bit creepy. Also came with a Swiss 40mm NATO filter. Now, um, this filter I'm assuming is out of date, but however, I'm going to keep it sealed because I've already got some open 40mm NATO filters, so it seems to me a bit of a waste to open it. It's got quite a cool orange sort of line down it. I think this is the same style filter as the ones that you get in the plastic cases where you cut them open, but I've never actually had one of those Swiss filters. So wait, there's the mask itself. In the bag, you get obviously the bag with it. And also, and I guess this is an anti-dim kit, so you've got the actual tube in there and um, a cloth. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to test it with an S10 filter. I'm just going to assemble everything and put some anti-dim on the inside to stop it fogging up when I test it. This filter should still be working, so hopefully we all get a successful test of this mask. Okay, so this is the mask on. I've got my S10 filter on it. I've done the straps up as tight as I think I'm going to get them. So I'm going to go in there and test it now. And hopefully the SM67 will be a success. I hope so because I paid £30 for it, but nevertheless it is a cool mask. Right, here commences the test. Let's hope this works. Right, so... If I smell anything, I'll let you know. But so far, so good. So, the straps on this mask are sort of interesting. They're the kind of retro ones where you've got these clips. You unclip it, you pull it the opposite way, and then you clip it again. Although I said it's sort of an old and primitive design, it actually works fairly well. Um, if I was to give you an idea on straps, sort of how good and bad they are, this is, I'd say, quite a strong design that's not the standard pull strap, you know, when you do that. The ones I don't like are rubber pull straps, so it does vary a bit on masks, because I think the Israeli ones have fairly good pull straps. But on some rubber pull strap marks, such as the Drager M65 to an extent, especially the PMK1 and the GP7, I find it's very hard to actually pull the strap tight when you're wearing a mask. So it's quite hard to keep adjusting it. You have to take it off, pull it, put on. Is that too tight or not? Whereas a mask like this, it's quite good. This mask is actually fairly comfortable. As primitive as it is, of the anti-fogging stuff that I smeared on the inside, this mask isn't actually fogging up. And I can't smell anything either, so it makes a good face seal. Uh, the one thing I really like with this mask, actually, is your chin has plenty of move, uh, room to move around inside the mask while you talk, so it doesn't feel tight on your chin, and um, it makes a seal around here on your neck, rather than lower where the jaw is. So I think that stops the mask being compromised um, easily. So I was saying, I think there's the SM either 74 or 75, which has the voice diaphragm or exhale valve here on the nose, and the intake in the same place. The same with this SM67, the actual voice uh, exhale valve, sorry, is here. So that always points straight down. But I don't have a problem with that, it just means you feel a bit of your breath on your neck. But yeah, overall I'd say this is a good mask. 
You've got a big roomy nose thing, so you'd have had a big nose, you'd fit your nose into here. And actually, even though there's no Tisso system as far as I can tell, or, um, you know, like mouth, nose, oral nose cup in here, I think how the nose system works is quite good, because it seems the eye bits sit quite flat to your face, but the nose section is shaped like that. So essentially this top section of the mouth sits close enough to the face that um, it's not going to fog up. This is actually a quite a clever design because they sort of circumnavigated having a, or circumvented, having a um, oral nose cut by just simply making part of the mask these bits sit closer to your face. The other good thing of course about having eye lenses that sit close to your face is you have a very good field of vision even if the eye bits aren't too big. So, just so you can have a close up look at the mask. Here we go. I think those of you in America are fortunate enough that somewhere like Bud K, I think, stocks, uh, stocks these or another one of the prepping places, stocks the SM75 or 74, whichever it is, the updated model, fairly cheaply, like $20 or something with the bag and everything else, whereas this particular one in the UK was £30. Uh, some of the Swiss bags, because I did buy a Swiss bag separately and much nicer than so as I said, this one is like a bit of see-through tarp that's been fashioned into a bag. Non-adjustable straps unless you tie them yourselves. The bag's just an empty kind of thing like that. So the bag definitely doesn't win any points, but the mask is surprisingly good. Um, when I got this, I thought, you know, thirty pounds for this is this it? But it's actually quite a good mask. I'm not going to lie. It's comfortable. It's making a good airtight seal, and it works. So, yes. Um, as much as I wouldn't say this is a complicated Swiss chronograph of a gas mask, with lots of bells and whistles and everything, it's actually a very functional mask that looks like it's fairly primitive, but it does all the jobs properly. I'd say it's 40mm NATO mask, the rubber is good, the straps are good. So you could do a lot worse than this, actually. Um, so as I said, if you can get one of these in the States for about $20, because it takes 40mm NATO filters, it would actually be a fairly good prepper's mask for that price. As I said many times, the Israeli civilian mask I'd rather go for, but this is very good actually. So, yep, I've had it on a few minutes, so let's uh, break the seal. Yeah, I can smell that. Let's see if I can break the seal at the chin here. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. But that's actually harder to break the seal than I thought. You're not going to casually break it if you've done the straps up to a decent degree. So, as you see, the straps, like on this one, are one where you can slide it that way to loosen it, or pull it this way to tighten it, and then you just clip it back, like that. So that's a good strap design, I like that design. You probably see that these ones I've got pretty much done up completely tight around the back. Um, you know, just to keep the feel good. Um, but obviously it depends on your head size, where you have those straps. So, yeah, to sum it up, the Swiss SM67 is a surprisingly good mask, even though it looks quite primitive. It does its job very well, and I definitely recommend getting one if you see one at a sensible price.